Uh, okay, in this video, I'm going to talk about configuration, simple configuration of OSPF on uh, Cisco routers. And for this, I'm using Cisco Packet Tracer. Uh, this tool actually is used by uh, Cisco Academy students. Now, in this simulation here, we have three routers. I have router RT1, RT2, and they're connected both to RTR router. So this router it plays a role of the backbone, or let's say, uh, point of contact of connection between the two routers. Now, I already configured these routers with IP addresses for serial interfaces and loopback interfaces, as you see here. So the next step, I'm going to configure all these routers to uh, with the OSPF routing protocol, and the SSPF will be in area zero. So the first thing I do, I go to the uh, RT1 router, as you see here, because I already configured the IP addresses, so I can check the uh, IP address, show IP interface brief, or I can do something better, include only those interfaces which are in the app state. So it shows that serial 0 slash 1 slash 0, loopback 0 uh, are uh, app interface. Actually, a loopback interface is always uh, an app state. Most important here is to have the physical interface serial 0, serial zero slash 1 slash 0 upstate. But, okay, good. So this is for the uh, router RT1. So what I do now, I'm going to start configuring the OSPF uh, routing protocol. I will go to router and I, I press on the question mark. So this, this is a simulator, but the real routers, you might see more than uh, these routing protocols which are proposed offered here. So uh, I, what I do, I'm going to call for OSPF. But after that, I can uh, select the process ID. So process ID is a number which is local to the router. So for example, here for RT1, I choose process ID 10. It's local in the router, also the same router. You can instantiate more than one OSPF process. So in our case, it will be only single OSPF process. Now, after I've done that, the next step consists of specifying which network are uh, involved actually in the routing process, so I'm going to specify the loopback interface, 172.16.0 slash 1, and after that, I specify the the, uh, the, uh, the white card mask. The white card mask is the inverse of a subnet mask, so in this case, it's a slash 24, which is equivalent to a subnet mask equal to 255.255.255.0, so uh, if we reverse it, it will be 0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.255, and I just specify that this... Uh, Loopback interface is in area zero. After that, I include the serial interface, serial zero slash one slash zero, to be uh, also active, um, to be active in area zero. I just type the IP address like this, for example. Uh, in this case, I just use the IP address, and I just want to fix that IP address. I can put uh, 0, .0, 0, .0, 0, 0, and here area area zero. So just by looking at this, so let me just display now here. I don't know if this works on the simulator. Again, router. Yeah, so this is what we have. We configured the SPF routing protocol to be active on this interface, the interface which has this network address, and another interface which has this IP address here. You see, you can use this, this technique, this method while specifying the interfaces uh, involved in the OSPF process. Now, I will go to the second router. Now, in the second router, it will be the same, uh, the same thing. Let me just uh, change the window uh, location, put it here. Uh, same story here. I'm going to do something which is show IP interface brief, okay, just to, to check if the interfaces are up and running. Yes, it is. So we have serial 0 slash 2 slash 0 and loopback uh, 0 interfaces. After that, I go to the global configuration mode, router, OSPF. And of course, since the OSPF process number is local to the router, I can put 20. So in RT1, it was 10. Here it is 20. So they don't need to be the same. And network, let me just specify this loopback interface. I'm going to be it's going to be 172.31.0.1. There is a way in uh, in OSPF actually. 
you can use the wildcat mask or you can specify the IP address and you can do something like, like this. Okay. And you can also do something like this, specify the subnet mask, which is your equivalent to slash 24. And you will see how it looks like. Uh, uh, sorry, I have to specify the area where this interface should be located. And then I will include the serial uh, 0 slash 2 slash 0 IP address. For example, I put 10.0.0.5. And here, uh, let's say I can fix to 0.0. All right, like this, and area 0. Area 0. Now everything works fine. So let's check and see if uh, the configuration. So I began router. And this is what I have. So this is the configuration of OSPF routing protocol on RT2. Once we are done, let me go to RTR router. So this router which is here. And uh, of course, I can always start by checking if all interfaces are configured correctly into the app. All right, they are. So I have two physical uh, interfaces, which are our sorry, interfaces. They are all in app state and running, plus the loopback interface. Now, what I can do in this case, I start configuring uh, the OSPF routing protocol, and I can put, for example, here OSPF process number 30. And for the networks, well, I don't have time, for example, to specify the network address or wildcard mask or subnet mask, etc. I can do something like this. So, which means that this involves all the interfaces configured on RTR. Of course, we have to be very careful when we do something like this because all interfaces are going to be uh, used by the OSPF process. So if we don't need that, we have to specify the network address or the IP address of each, info, uh, each interface that needs to be involved. So once I'm done, okay, so again, uh, let me just type show running. Here, begin, begin, router. So you see now? So this is what I have. And what you notice, you notice that there is a convergence. So for example, OSPF neighbor, and it specifies here, it shows that RTR has neighbor relationship with the neighboring relationship with the two routers, which are RT1 and uh, RT2. So these are the, and of course, it's going to look at these two routers, or it will identify these two routers using their uh, router ID. So the router ID in this case, since we are configuring the loopback interface, it will be the loopback interface. Now, if we have many loopback interfaces, so it's going to use the highest, uh, the, IP, the highest IP address of all the configured in those loopback interfaces. But in this case, we have one loopback interface configured in RT1. That's why things works like that. So now let's just display the routing table, and this is what we have. And if I want to be more explicit, and I'd like to see the OSPF routing table. So we have two entries. I have an entry that goes directly to the, uh, that takes me directly to the loopback interface 0 of RT1. And another entry that shows me how to reach the loopback interface uh, 0 of RT2. All right, so I can see all these things as not as But if I go back to display the routing protocol, I noticed something here is that these IP addresses actually they are viewed as slash 32. I would like to see them as a slash 24. To do that is very simple. Okay, let me just save this. Uh, first, I have to revisit every uh, router. I go to the loopback interface 0, IP, uh, OSPF network, and here I put this comment, point to point. Okay, let me just save this. I do the same thing with RT2. All right, so uh, I go to loopback 0, IP OSPF, network type. Type of network is point to point. All right, and again in RTR, I do the same thing. Uh, okay, and then uh, I specify the type of network which should be for loopback interface, which should be considered as. Point to point. Once done, sorry, I save this. Okay, I go to RT1. In RT1, I can always clear IP route. I can clear routing table just to force a refresh of the routing table. Show IP route now. 
and there you go. So you see now we have the network address with the specified subnet mask. So previously it used to consider IP address to the uh, subnet mask slash 32, so the complete IP address, but now we are forcing the uh, router, the OSPF, to consider a loopback interface IP address as being one IP address in the network address as it is specified here following the subnet mask, of course. This is true in RTE2, so IP route, so IP route, uh, oh, sorry, I have to leave the space, all right, and this is what we have. Okay, and we have RTR, RTR, so uh, IP route, and this is what we have now. <coughs> uh, I think that we, yeah, so, okay, so let me just uh, try and see why it's not working. Uh, why it's not working, yes. Uh, show run, because when I configured, yeah, this is the point, when I configured routing protocol, yeah, routing protocol is fine, it's configured like this, so this is fine, 172.16.0.0, which is uh, exactly what we need here, and uh, all right, so what I can do, I can simply restart, Okay, and then fast 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 forward. I go back to here and see if we have the uh, expected, yeah, so this is what we have. We have the expected routing table because the simulator is not really perfect. Uh, it might always uh, give us some uh, strange events. So I have to be very careful. So what I have done, I just forced the, uh, all routers to restart and then I use the fast forward. All the users of Cisco Packet Tracer know how to do that. And now I'm getting this. So from here, I will be able to see the all OSPF, uh, whatever is available on, uh, on Cisco Packet Tracer. For example, um, the neighbors, OK? So these are the neighbors. How many neighbors do we have? We have RTR has two neighbors. So if we go to RT1, definitely uh, RT1 will show that it has one neighbor only, which is identified through its uh, loopback uh, IP address, loopback interface IP address. As I said, if you have many loopback interfaces on router, so the OSPF will identify the uh, router by its highest, the highest IP address assigned to the, uh, of the loopback interfaces. So I hope this video was uh, informative. Thank you for watching.